So what's going on Baffle Gang? Today we got one of these videos. Sometimes we love to get baffled by these UFO clips and I love to show you guys uh, these UFO clips as well and get baffled together but other times I love to see these discussions, hear these discussions and talk about this and get baffled that way. There are many ways to get baffled and today it's one of those ways. Like this video, subscribe if you're brand new. We upload every single day, roll it. Fossil fuels, centralized utilities, centralized economies that they put the lid on this and took it out of the supervision even of the U.S. President and most members of Congress and the British Prime Minister and et cetera and so on. Most high officials in the Pentagon know very little about this subject because I have been the person to brief them. And the ones who do know are part of this conspiracy of silence, for lack of a better word, to cooperate to keep this stuff very secret. Mm. The secrecy isn't because people are afraid that they're going to find out that there's life in the universe. It's it's the technology that they possess, right? Uh, and they don't want the energy because if they uh, they got the energy out, then how are they going to make money with the current technology? Because if it's confirmed that these UFOs are real, and they are, with it will become an immediate question by the scientific community, well, how are they operating? And when that gets okay. asked, we have people who can answer it. And when that gets Damn. answered, it's the end of big oil, it's the end of coal, it's the end of centralized electric utilities. And it's a com the biggest change in the global macroeconomic order since the Industrial Revolution of the mid-1800s. That's what we're dealing with. The secrecy is clearly related to that. Nothing else. It's all about power and geopolitical power and centralized power. A lot of people don't realize there are about 250 integrated corporations and individuals in the world that control virtually all of the, of the world economy. Well, let's just say that the, the government does not know or most people in the government don't don't know. Yeah, it makes sense, right? It, like this is very high level and this is why we're seeing that they are now starting studies. I guess they don't know, maybe, right? I don't believe into that. I think they know, but okay, what he's trying to say is that very few that know, most don't. Make, makes total sense, but who knows though? Who knows though? And they're who all interrelated. They? They're vertically and horizontally integrated. And their interests in this are profound. I remember Lawrence Rockefeller when I was out at his ranch, and of course he had hosted President Clinton and his wife, Hillary Clinton, uh, for a couple of years uh, during their vacations in August uh, during his presidency. And they were out there actually because we were doing briefings. So uh, I was putting okay. together big briefing documents and, and Lawrence Rockefeller was sort of a mediator providing information to them. And you know, I was at his uh, ranch out in the Tetons once and he turned to me, he said, Dr. Greer, you know, no aspect of life on earth will be untouched <clears throat> by this information coming out so vast and so profound are the implications. I said, I know Mr. Rockefeller, that's why it's been kept secret. It's not because it's a silly thing. Now, what the controllers, the disinformation controllers want the public to believe is that it's about silly stuff like, oh, you know, an alien took me on board a spaceship and I have a baby floating in an incubator around Alpha Centauri, what I call the silly season of all this. And that disinformation is put out there through the UFO subculture, through the media, through documentary makers, through filmmakers who don't know the difference between... Uh, and perhaps the YouTubers as well. <laughs> Yeah, right? Uh, I, uh, yeah, man. Now, this is very, very interesting. Very, very intriguing. Information yeah. and disinformation. 90% of everything on this subject is disinformation designed Lies. to do two things. Yeah. Either engender fear, because it's very frightening information, which shuts people down, or to make it look silly and absurd so that serious scientists, policymakers, intellectuals, and academics will just dismiss it out of hand. And also humans love conflict, right? Like most of the movies, uh, they are not about alien contact and peace. It's about destruction, right? Most of that, and, and we love that. We love that. Humans love negative negativity. As much as you say, it, oh no, positivity, bro, positivity. Of course, like, yeah, positivity, absolutely. But deep down, we also like the, the negativity as well. This is why we, uh, I mean, negative headlines, fearful headlines get generates the most amount of clips clicks why is that because we love that deep down we don't want to admit it we don't want to love it it's just how we are uh, this is how we're programmed right it's with the it's to do with the survival instincts we want to know what's happening so we can keep ourselves around longer and survive longer i believe that's the the the, the mechanism that's built in it's been done consistently since the 40s <clears throat> and 50s 
And I have documents that prove that this is the case. I have a CIA document stating, this is in the 1950s, that this is a subject for the use of psychological warfare techniques and psyops, psyops. And that is true. And so it, it's something where the public, for the most part, is greatly disinformed deliberately. You know, not just misinformed, but disinformed. What the Disclosure Project's trying to do is by referring to people who've had first-hand involvement with these projects, plus our own first-hand research, real-time research, is to put together the assessments of what's going on. And we feel this is important to share that with the President or members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, as it is with the general public, because contrary to what the public would think on something this sensitive, most people in government, even high officials in government, if they even know this could be true, if they make an inquiry about it, this happened to President Carter, it happened to President Clinton. It's happened to many high officials. They are basically told, we're not even going to tell you. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll just be denied that it exists at all. But sometimes they will flat out say, we're not going to tell you. Give you an example. In the late 1990s, after I had briefed uh, members of Congress on this problem, I was invited to do a stand-up briefing at the Pentagon for the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, what's called J-2. And this admiral I had provided and in our book, Disclosure, which you can get at the website disclosureproject.org, we have a document that actually is from the 90s, early 90s, that lists code names and project names and code numbers that were authentic and legitimate as of that time dealing with this issue. I gave this to the Admiral's point of contact to us. He looked into it. He actually found one of those compartmented secret cells in the Pentagon. He called them and said, I want to be read into or briefed on this project. And they said, sir, you don't have a need to know. This is the head of intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I mean, we're not talking about some low-level munchkin out here. Yeah, like, this is why I want to know, like, who are they that know? Because uh, if you're saying, generally speaking, in, uh, in the government, most people don't know uh, whether they exist or not. They think they exist, uh, or, or some of them will know why, uh, that they exist, but they wouldn't know why they're not coming out and telling us. Uh, if what he says is true, uh, make, makes total sense, right? It's about like power control uh, and money. They don't want the uh, the technology being out there. Yeah, it makes total sense, right? Like if they come out tomorrow and tell us that the aliens exist, then okay, how they fly? Uh, UFOs, uh, what do the UFOs use? The anti-gravity technology. Uh, well, uh, how does that work? Okay, it works like that this way. I, I don't know. So this is why I'm saying like X, Y, Z. Okay, so how do you get X, Y, Z? Okay, so you got that. Can we use that for... And ultimately, if that's true, yeah, you don't want this technology getting out there, then uh, they won't be able to make money with coal, uh, petrol, fossil fuels, and all that. Yeah, makes total sense. Makes total sense. But, but here's the thing, though. Somebody knows. And that's somebody. Who are they? right like who who knows who knows and ultimately we hear all uh, we hear this yeah need to know basis uh even the president is on need to know basis which means that there are files there are cases there is information that goes above his pay grade that that's a level beyond that so he, yeah he's not gonna be told that so it, that tells me that even the president is like okay give me the files Sir, we cannot do that. That's a need to know only. Tells me that the president don't have the authority, but the guy that's telling the president that, Sir, need to know only, that guy has the authority. And, and, and that's the thing. I want to know who are they? Who are they? Now, what that means is that you have a complete decapitation of the constitutional leadership. And it also means that it's very important for us to try to identify intelligent sources who are courageous enough to come forward and speak the truth and put that information out to the public. Because I think nothing less than the future of planet Earth is hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking just about whether or not people know there are UFOs. We're talking about what are we going to do about the fact that we've, we're about to reach peak oil? What are we going to do with the fact that we have global warming and both polar yeah. ice caps are melting? What are we going to do about the fact that there is this increasing concentration of wealth in a few hands, but increasing poverty around the world that's engendering yep. terrorism? Yep, the rich gets richer, the poor stay poor. And, and a lot of people also don't believe in what, what's called uh, global warming. I, I think 
it exists, but it's not the way they promote it, right? Of course, they're... I, I'm kind of like in the middle with this one. I think it's real. I think it, it's true. I, I think we should plant more trees. Yeah, right? But but the way they, they put fear in people, it's not that crazy, right? Or maybe it is. I don't know. I, I want to know your take for sure. Um, ...and hatred and conflict. All these are trend lines that can be corrected by this information and these technologies coming out. Not just information, it's about the fact that there are seriously important technologies that would give us an entirely new sustainable civilization that are being kept secret because letting them out makes redundant and obsolete. The Closure Project is a worldwide effort to identify military and government and some corporate insiders who've had personal knowledge, extraterrestrial or UFO or advanced propulsion related systems that have been kept secret for at least 50 or 60 years. Sheesh. The disclosure project's oriented towards putting together credible government documents and these witnesses so that there is an undeniable case made that this is real and not fictitious. It started really in 19, the early 1990s. And after I had briefed the President Clinton's first CIA director on this problem, it was made very clear to me that the executive branch of the US government did not want to do this because, I'm quoting, the president was concerned he would end up like Jack Kennedy. I'm not oh, kidding. Crap. That was said to me by President Clinton's closest friend. So what we decided to do was to take this on ourselves and initially put this information in the hands of members of Congress to see if they would hold open hearings. And when they chose not to, by 98, we decided to do this ourselves. And so the Disclosure Project was an outgrowth of our identifying the intelligence sources and the evidence and then putting it through the system of government to give the government of we the people the opportunity to do the right thing and end all the illegal secrecy and bring this information out. And also there are like a lot of, uh, what's this called, conspiracies that says that we have treaties with alien, whether you want to believe it or not, that's up to you. Um, I, I don't know whether that's true or not, but these are like conspiracies and this is something that we hear all the time as well. And, and I wonder like, okay, <laughs> gonna sound kind of silly, but I wonder what, what the aliens think about coming out and you know the, the 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 people of the the earth knowing that they exist are they also in favor of their technology not being revealed perhaps is that the reason because uh, yeah if this is uh, true then i guess uh, yeah the reason why they're not telling us the truth is because they want to keep the technology secret for as long as possible so maybe the aliens are like, okay, yeah, let's keep it a secret as long as possible, but we're still gonna fly. We're still gonna be on your planet flying around, flying around, flying around, and sometimes crash, I guess, maybe, perhaps. Uh, since they did not <laughs> have the courage to do so in 2001, about four years ago, we decided to go ahead and do that ourselves. And, that, and since then, we have been putting this information out in the public domain. Now our website's had over 10 million people on it. We have a Disclosure Project video that was the National Sheesh. Press Club event that's been seen by nearly 3 million people, which is subscribe, quite a large guys, number. Um, like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Let's go for two, two likes on the video, guys. Um, and we just continue to put that information out uh, and uh, through venues like this and, and, and speaking and what have you. Uh, we still would like to see the Congress take this on. But I think given the current governmental penchant for secrecy and supporting corporate illegal projects, it's unlikely that's going to happen. So I think it's really going to be in our laps. We, the people, are going to have to tell the truth. And so the mm. Disclosure Project is a nonprofit effort to assemble the best possible witnesses and the best available evidence and put it out to the public and also to our leaders. We know people can see a lot of this at DisclosureProject.org, which is our website. And we have over 450 military and intelligence witnesses. Some are, they range from generals and brigadier generals to air traffic controllers and strategic air command uh, personnel in the Air Force to civilian people in the uh, FAA, the Federal uh, Aviation Administration, to astronauts and cosmonauts. And it's an enormous uh, database of, of people who have up close and personally seen UFOs or working. Yeah, th those of you that have not seen Dr. Stephen Greer documentaries like the Cyrus, I believe the fifth kind, uh, he has, uh, yeah, if you Google Dr. Stephen Greer documentaries, just check them out. And generally speaking, in his documentaries, he brings in a lot of these people with credentials and uh, interview different people, add their quotes, direct quotes. Uh, and, and it's really, really interesting that there are that many people, high level uh, people with credentials 
mil in military as well, uh, talking about all of this stuff. It, it is uh, truly baffling, I guess, to say the least in those projects in their capacity as a government uh, or military person. And the, many of them, most of them, had top secret uh, clearances, some of them highly compartmented. And uh, their information is really dispositive. Uh, we have uh, enormous uh, documentation that is corroborated by multiple people. For example, when I said, let's see what the Strategic Air Command and what the interest has been in these extraterrestrial vehicles for nuclear uh, seeing what we're doing with nuclear weapons. We decided not to identify one or two, but we have like a couple dozen of those people who were in strate strategic uh, air command, who were in, in nuclear facilities, who were in the old Atomic Energy Commission, like Colonel Diedrichson that we have as a witness, who had personal knowledge of the fact that even though there's clearly no evidence, I want to emphasize this, that these extraterrestrial uh, civilizations are hostile towards us, I think they're very worried about our hostility. I always turn this on its head mm -hmm. because most of these sort of uh, documentaries are always like alien invasion and all this stuff. Yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. The issue is that, you know, if they were hostile, we would know it by now. It's clear. True. Uh, yeah, I, I, I believe into that, but I also believe in the fact that some of them gotta be hostile though. Like the, the universe is so big, it's so vast. Uh, for example, like even on our own planet, some people are hostile, some are not. Uh, some animals are hostile, some are not. Just mathematically speaking, just mathematically speaking, I would like to believe that some of them gotta be, some of them not. Perhaps it's like a species that is or that isn't, uh, yeah. Or perhaps, like, be because we're assuming that they have not... Uh, yeah, that, that's true, right? So far, thank God, I guess, where they're, they're not hostile. We ha they have not overtaken our, own, our planet, or maybe they have in some way, but and we don't know. Maybe, listen, I don't know. But, but based on what's going on, it looks like that they have not invaded us. So clearly, it uh, makes sense that they're not hostile, and that's the point he's making. But what I'm saying is that what if it's like a chess move ki a kind of thing, right? What if we they, they have, or maybe we have not reached, and they also have not reached that threshold where they have to engage and invade? right like maybe there's a threshold maybe uh it's like a chess move maybe they're waiting for something to happen and then they will uh invade and be hostile or maybe they're not hostile at all right uh but interesting interesting uh baffling indeed baffling indeed. clear to me that what's going on is that they're very concerned that at the time that humanity reached the ability to go into space early space exploration 50s we also had already developed weapons of mass destruction and thermonuclear and hydrogen bombs and stuff. And that the, the co coincidence of that, the coming together of those two things, put a big red flag over Earth. And so if you look at the databases from the 50s, 60s, 70s on forward, not only in the United States, but in Great Britain, in um, the Soviet Union, in China, that wherever we had uh, space, aerospace and nuclear facilities, there were a lot of these so-called UFOs being seen. And it makes sense because it, it's a very short distance from where we are now to being able to go further out in the space with these kinds of aggressive tendencies. And one of the things I point out to people is that our social and spiritual development appears to have uh, lagged behind, uh, behind our technological prowess. And our technological capacities are actually, at this point, a threat to perhaps the cosmic order, if you will. Uh, a term called fast walkers that's uh, been used uh, from people who have been at uh, NORAD uh, that have tracked these objects uh, in near Earth uh, space. Actually, that term was used in the 60s and 70s. The National Security Agency actually for a long time had called these ETVs, extraterrestrial vehicles. Um, the word UFO is actually a disinformation term that was invented after they knew that they weren't unidentified and they knew they didn't fly. Crazy. So it's sort of a a mind play the fa yeah like <laughs> it is identified but they say it's unidentified and yeah got the name of UFO yeah okay well crazy point I guess as walkers are these very rapid moving um, electrogravitic and anti-gravity discs and shit craft of various shapes that are tracked on uh, classified uh, tracking systems both in their deep space network and also in the atmosphere uh, we have more than one witness who have been involved in the uh, tracking of these objects on radar. You know, many people say, well, look, if this stuff was real, why are there no radar reports? I said, we have them. We actually have the radar tapes from the FAA. So we have uh, people from the FAA 
and from the military who have tracked these objects. And uh, they've been called fast walkers because, as opposed to slow walkers, which are satellites, because they move at enormous speeds. For example, they've been tracked at going tens of thousands of miles per hour in the atmosphere and make Sheesh. a right-hand turn without decelerating. Well, you can't <laughs> do that with a conventional system. You have Bro, like, even on my electric scooter, if I want to just turn a little bit, I have to pump brakes, bro. I have to pump them brakes and then make a right or left turn. It, 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 is, it is wild how gravity works on our own planet. I need this anti-gravity technology right now, man. And once we have that, can a brother perhaps, like, get this anti-gravity technology be uh, developed for or perhaps put on the electric scooter that I have? Is that even possible? Like the video if you guys want that being possible. Have to correct for gravity and mass inertia. And that's what these things are doing. So these have been tracked on uh, dedicated and classified radar systems. Occasionally, people who are on an ordinary system will pick them up if they really wanted to find out. I think they need to look at these first-hand top secret witnesses and what they've seen. I think that if you go to the civilians, it's a whole gamish of misinformation, disinformation, and amateur hour. What we try to do is professionalize the effort, and people really need to look. I mean, if somebody who had the clearance to carry nuclear weapons or launch nuclear weapons yeah. saw these objects over a nuclear facility and reported it and have documents to prove it happened, yeah. this is dispositive. That's what someone who is wanting to look into this who says, well, could this really be true and I don't know about it? They need to look at that, and we've assembled it. We have a 600-page book of top-secret documents and the transcripts of these witnesses. We have videotapes. We have a four-hour tape. We have a two-hour tape. We have a one-hour tape. Uh, and our website, DisclosureProject.org, actually has a lot of this information and the, and the te testimony on there. I think that's what people need to look at, and it's the weight of the evidence. But if you want to look at uh, one case, for example, that would be dispositive, look at what uh, this, uh, the third highest ranking member of the FAA, John Callahan, brought to us. This man, during the Reagan years, was in charge of accidents and investigations for the FAA in the United States, the Federal Aviation Administration. He was called into a case, which is the Japan Airlines case over Alaska, oh, where yeah. an extraterrestrial vehicle the size of a huge Football. ship was being tracked on military radar, civilian radar, and on board a 747's onboard radar for oh, a prolonged yeah. period of time. This was yeah okay so not sure if he's talking about the the case that I heard but the case that I heard was like a Japanese airliner was seeing like a round shaped UFO just come around the aircraft and yeah he was quiet needless to say he was really really baffled by it and there are reports of that and and it's an old story it's quite an old story now maybe he's talking about that uh, or some maybe another case given back to him he did an analysis of the data he determined that it was a real structured object moving at enormous and unusual velocities in fact it would be one point in the sky and then instantly would be in another place 40 50 miles away and this thing was the size of he said of a destroyer a battleship big huge it wasn't like 30 feet around it was hundreds of feet this was seen by the pilot we have the pilot's report we have the original Sheesh. radar tapes and the digital reports this thick of a report he was called in to do a briefing for Ronald Reagan's science advisor, people from the CIA and FBI. At the end of that meeting, they turned to him and they said, you were not at this meeting, this event didn't happen, and we're confiscating all this stuff. Bruh. What they didn't know is that they confiscated duplicates. He kept the originals, and when he retired, he gave them to us. This man's name is John Callahan. We have his name, address, a phone number. We have all this evidence, that's one case. So, I mean, it, and it's dispositive. And the question is, if you have one case like that, it proves it, but we have hundreds of cases like that. So I would say to people, look at the evidence. The evidence is there. Now, the big question is, why doesn't the masses of people know about it? The only institution that is more corrupt than what I'm describing as this rogue transnational kleptocracy is the major media. More worse than the Congress, worse than the White House, yeah. worse than anything at the normal level of... The, the, the media controls everything. The media does control everything and everything and everything, yeah. ...appearances at the Pentagon is big media. Big media does not report the truth about these things because they are not free to. And we think in the United States and in the Western world, we really have a free press. We have a free press on everything that's not important. On the really important issues, it's very controlled. And this is the most important issue. This is the biggest secret in the history of the human race, the known 
modern history of government. And uh, they have cooperated with keeping this secret. ABC News and other big, major networks were at the Disclosure Project National Press Club event about four years ago. The executive producer for ABC News told me they wanted to do a very big expose on this through Primetime Live or 2020. I said, we'll give you everything. So we gave him literally, you know, the, the sort of uh, distilled 35 hours of digital videotape of these witnesses and all our documents uh, so he could do this and carte blanche access to all these top secret witnesses. He called me a couple weeks later and said, well, they won't let me do this. I said, mm -hmm. who's they? He they, says, well, Dr. Yeah. Greer, you know who they are. And so the I don't think he knows who they are and I definitely do not know who they are. And this is what I have been saying, who they are, who are they? I want to know who are they? Who is the one that has more knowledge than, the, let's just say, the president? Who is the one that doesn't have to go through need to know only, need to know case by case, right? Who is the one that can bypass everything? I, I guess uh, in simple terms, we would call them elite, but, uh, but still, like, who are they? Who are they? The people, the corporate bosses who answer to some of these know who they are. And so the people, the corporate bosses who answer to some of these transnational financial and other interests were basically killed the project. Uh, we've mm -hmm. seen this happen over and over again. And so you can get a certain amount of information out through the large media, but it's very superficial, very brief. That's what yeah. we yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, check out this video on the screen. This is the last discussion video that we've done on this topic. I think you're really going to enjoy this one. If you enjoyed this one, you're really going to love this one. Check this out. If you've already seen it and you want to check some, some UFO clips and be baffled like that, check out the video on the left, man. The night is still young. Check it out and I'll see you right there.